Hi. Um, I've had a residency on the island for the last six months, so um, I've had a nice kind of slow time getting used to the place. I guess where this work started was uh, wandering around and uh, two things kind of happened. When I arrived on the island it was the seagull mating time and so I became intensely aware of the sound that, um, because it was just covered in these really aggressive psychotic seagulls that were just, you had to kind of really run for your life across that concrete bit and was so noisy and so loud. So I became quite aware of the sound on the island and then I sort of started to think also about an absence of sound with the, what might have been, you know, a hundred or so years ago with the, the sound of hammering, which was missing. So I started to think about that. And also the other thing that sort of started this work were uh, wandering around looking at, there's two things, there's the silos, I don't know if you've all had a chance to have a look at the carved out silos on the top of the island, and also the solitary confinement cells which are, um, have just recently been uncovered. They were to me like the most um, fantastic and kind of horrific uh, anti-sculptures in a way, they were like carved out negative spaces, hand carved by convicts and you know, from the top of solid ground, they would be carving down and literally they would be uh, carving out a space that would be where they would eventually inhabit. It was like carving out your own tomb. So the, the sandstone became a, a kind of emblem in, about, for the island for me as well as the sound. So I started thinking about how, um, what it must feel like to carve stone. Not that you can really reimagine it because, I mean, those guys were probably half starved and wearing chains but I wanted to just have a sense of uh, what that might be like so I worked with a stone carver and he taught me a bit about carving stone so we set forth on carving all these zeros that you see around and some of the numbers and then the sound uh, that you, you hear is a treatment of the, the sound of hammering but it's, it's a sound of hammering um, actually carving the, the negative space out of the, the rocks and also it's the sound uh, with special microphones uh, placed in the stone so it's from the stone's point of view as well so it's a mixture of sounds from various perspectives of the, the stone I might add also the stone actually probably originally comes from this island although it's not where I got the, these were leftover stones from my father's house and I'm sure they came from here orig originally, but um, so I sort of brought them back home to roost. So the, the formation of this uh, circle, in a sense, is a bit like a seance. I think the, the seance, the idea of the seance was quite prevalent during the kind of industrial, the era of that industrial period where I think people were losing their religion. The seances were really big at that time. and. They were very theatrical events and I think people knew that they were possibly quite fake but there was this sort of edge of your belief where you want, you want to be kind of um, scared by some possible supernatural world but you also see the mechanics of the, the seance. So in a sense they were the first multimedia kind of installations. You know the circle is a very... Um, kind of, uh, I guess, recognisable geometric form. It's very, per you know, a circle is often associated with kind of a, you know, very tight, formal, perfect kind of shape. Um, in this instance, though, it's porous. You can actually walk into the centre. I would hope that people do actually walk into the centre. So, in a sense, I was trying to build up a, the density of sound in, in the centre of the circle and kind of draw attention to that void space in the middle and in a way perhaps suggest a, or recreate uh, an object through another material like the sound. So the sound then becomes a kind of object. It, it sets up this threshold, the circle sets up a, a space where I think people often don't feel like crossing over that, it's sort of what am I stepping into? You know, all your beliefs come in, like, oh my God, what's on, what will happen to me if I step over that threshold? So I think one of the threads running through a lot of the work would be um, 
a wish to kind of create frameworks for different kinds of behaviour. It was quite good on the opening, on the party night, that we found people kissing in here and, um, and other things that were going on. But um, I quite like to see what you can, how you can kind of manipulate behaviour through uh, different structures. With the, the sort of oogie boogie side of it, the kind of feel of it that I think sets up an idea of something supernatural, then I find that's a kind of a, it's a creative tool, it's a way of discovering things rather than working with what you know, you're continually working with stuff you don't know. So I always work with um, a site and I never know what I'm going to, you know, how it's going to work out till I've actually start working the site. So I spent at least uh, like two, two or three weeks working on this, but you know, I assemble all these things in, and I make bits and pieces, but I, I never know what's going to happen with them till I actually get them in situ and whether it'll work at all in a way so well at least I would hope that they might take away a, a certain awareness of a sort of um, a threshold from one space to the other um, perhaps a consideration of the, the stone that you see all around you on this island and perhaps a further reverie on where that how that stone got shaped and why and, and also perhaps the ground that you're standing on now, my one bit of advice would be to emerging artists is that think, stop looking at the kind of success and the hustle and all that thing because it doesn't work. You have to come back and be alone with your work and just do the work and then eventually, if, it, if it's any good, it'll find a way out sometimes if you're lucky. But, but if you kind of is, uh, really focus on doing the work then it, and put all your energy into that, eventually it becomes quite irrepressible. Because you can spend a lot of time, you know, take, spending all your energy doing, trying to make, you know, connect up with people and be, you know, make the work successful, hustle your way through. And, and that takes away, I think, from all your energy that you need for the work. I think art making requires a huge dedication and not worry, you know, like it's the work is what is the most important thing. It's interesting you pointing the camera at me saying you're very successful. I just think... Yeah, but I don't have any money. I don't own anything. Uh, this is really, I mean, I'm, this is fantastic having this opportunity. I mean, this is, to me, it's been a wonderful experience being here. And, and to get here, I can't tell you how long it's, it's taken a lot of work. And it's very, um, I, my only advice is don't do it for the money. Because <laughs> there isn't any. <laughs>